This is another rules video. Um, looking mainly at movement, but there's a couple of other points I want to cover. Um, okay, stacking. Stacking's checked at the uh, end of every game phase. Uh, any units in excess of the stacking amount um, will be eliminated. The stacking limit for each hex is three. That's three division or core equivalent. A camp group counts as a division in this instance. Uh, HQ units um, do not count towards the stacking limit. But you can only have one HQ in a hex. Romanian and Hungarian units can't stack together, no matter whose side they're on. Uh, that's for historical reasons, which I won't go into now. Bridgeheads, um, Soviet support marker for a bridgehead enables them to stack up to six core in a bridgehead hex. Nothing about this game, the unusual thing about it, is there's no zones of control. Um, the only effect of enemy units and really on the into adjacent spaces is, is to prevent supply lines uh, from being traced. So it's very, very unusual. I can't think of another game off the top of my head that doesn't have zones of control. A quick look at movement. There's lots of different types of unit movement. Uh, and they can all be done in the, uh, the the movement phase. Most of it's pretty basic. You're moving from hex to hex. You've got to look at the terrain effects chart and see how much each one's cost. Uh, if you're moving through roads, rail lines, that only costs half a movement point per hex entered, so long as you follow the road or the rail line. Um, you can always move one hex. Uh, unless it's into prohibited terrain. Um, usual things about you can't accumulate movement points, etc. Uh, friendly units do not affect the cost of movement. That's, you can't enter, enter a hex containing uh, enemy units. Um, but so that's pretty much standard movement. Uh, each unit has got a movement amount on, on its counter, which is the uh, the one on the on the bottom row, on the far right. You can see that Polish tank unit there. That's got a movement of three. HQ movement slightly different. HQs cannot end their movement in a hex where they'd be out of supply, so. They basically you've got to stay on road and rail hexes, but well, they don't have to stay on them so long as they start on them and end on them, they could move off a road or a rail hex, but they've got to end up in supply. This thing about Soviet cores in reinforced mode um, if they spend more than two movement points and end their movement outside the operational range of a, a theatre operation marker, they're immediately put into standard mode. Probably need to show you this. Um, so let me get a, a Soviet infantry division. Sorry, infantry corps. Now, infantry corps here, this is a, basically the non reinforced or the unreinforced mode, which is the back of the counter. So they've got a very poor attack strength, reasonable defense and reasonable movement. But they can be put into a, what's called a reinforced mode. Um, now reinforced mode, there's various ways of doing this. There's, a, there's even support counters that allow you to do this. Um, but if you notice, the attack goes goes up massively if they're in uh, reinforced mode. So there there is a rule that says you, you can't stay in reinforced mode um, unless you end if you end your movement outside the operational range of a TO marker. Um, you got strategic movement. Um, 
any unit except for HQs can do strategic movement. Uh, um, it must make the entire move in the command range of one or many supplied HQs of the same nationality. Uh, you can't at any point be adjacent to an enemy unit. Uh, Soviet units can, can't move into hexes containing fortifications or ger into German cities unless they are controlled by the Soviet player. Uh, so think of you using strategic movement, you double your movement points. Germans have a heavy restriction on uh, strategic movement. You've got to spend a support marker of your own choice to do that. Uh, if you don't have any of those support markers, any support markers available, or ones that you're prepared to spend, you cannot move strategically. One important thing to remember is only one counter needs to be spent to move as many units as he wants to by strategic movement. That's really important to remember that. Uh, Soviet Infantry Corps in reinforced mode expending more than four movement points and ending their strategic movement outside the operational range of TO marker are pushed back into standard mode again. There are other types of unit movement. The Germans have an abandoned equipment and retreat movement. Um, the German places two available support markers on one German HQ. Uh, the, the support markers are, uh, are expended to allow this movement to take place. The HQ can't move, but all units in the command radiance of the HQ can use strategic movement, even if they start the movement phase adjacent to an enemy unit. Once this movement capability is completed, the support markers are returned to the draw pile. Now, this sort of messing around affects the Hitler satisfaction approval track, which is something I'm not going to cover at the moment. But just beware that you can't, the Germans can't just make huge re retreats and, and abandon places because Hitler just basically goes absolutely bonkers if you do. And that will have negative effects for you. Other types of movement, rail movement. German player only, uh, you've got a rail capacity which is uh, determined every, every turn. Uh, you can expend one rail capacity point to move an HQ or a division and you spend two to move an armoured division. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, you can move an unlimited number of hexes using rail movement. Uh, obviously, you've got to stay on a rail line. <laughs> um, German reinforcements can be transported by rail when put on the map during the reinforce, re, reinforce, reinforcement and replacement phase. But you have to use rail capacity as well. Germans also got the ability to use naval movement. They've got up to three naval points available each turn. Um, the rule is then you expend one naval point to move a division or an HQ, or two naval points to move an armoured unit. To use naval movement, you've got to start the movement phase in a port on the Baltic Sea. And then it's moved to any other port on the Baltic Sea under Germany control and German control, which is not surrounded. A port of arrival must never have been controlled by the Soviet player. Right, if you if a unit is uh, occupying a port X and it's adjacent to enemy units. You got to roll a d6 before you start to see if you can actually make the naval movement. Um, crossing of rivers, movement penalty for crossing major rivers or minor rivers is cancelled by the presence of a bridge. 
That can be either the bridge on the map or bridge created by HQs flipping onto the pontoon side. Right, that'll do for the moment. I'm not going to cover these special fort rules as well, because that's quite complicated. 